Hello and a very good morning to you viewers. In this particular audio video lecture, I will be discussing the formation of Cooper pairs. As you all might be aware of the fact that the energy gap in superconductors differs from the gap in semiconductors in a very fundamental way. In semiconductors, the gap prevents the flow of electric current and we need to supply energy in order to excite the electrons from the valence to the conduction band. Now, in case of superconductors, on the other hand, current can flow despite the presence of the gap. The energy gap has no effect upon the behavior of the special electrons that carry current in a superconductor. Now, if we recall the temperature dependence of the penetration depth in superconductors, it clearly suggests a density ns of the superconducting electrons that would increase from 0 at t is equal to tc to the full electron density at t is equal to 0. This behavior is consistent with the presence of an energy gap delta separating the states of superconducting electrons from those of the normal electrons. Also, there is a considerable amount of evidence for the existence of such a gap. Both experiment and theory indicate that delta is temperature dependent. It vanishes at t is equal to tc and attains its maximum value delta naught at t is equal to 0. At low temperatures, that means at temperatures much below the superconducting transition temperature, we would expect that the number of excited normal electrons would fall off as exponential of minus delta naught by kBT and that this temperature dependence would be reflected in the electronic contribution to the heat capacity. This is indeed found to be the case and delta naught turns out to be of the order of kBT. Now direct evidence for an energy gap is provided by measurements of the absorption of electromagnetic waves at low temperatures that means at temperatures quite below the superconducting transition temperatures the absorption is vanishingly small at low frequencies but increases sharply when the photon energy is sufficient to excite electrons across the energy gap the frequency for the onset of absorption is given by h nu is equal to 2 times delta naught now the factor 2 arises because the absorption of a photon creates two excited electrons. A uh, natural explanation for this is provided by the BCS theory of superconductivity according to which the superconducting electrons are bound together in pairs known as Cooper pairs and 2 delta is the binding energy of a Cooper pair so that the equation H nu is equal to 2 delta naught describes the breaking of a pair by absorption of a photon. Uh, an important contribution to our understanding of the superconducting phase was made by Cooper in 1956 who recognized that the ground state of an electron gas is unstable if we add weak attractive interaction between each pair of electrons. As it passes through the solid, an electron on account of its negative charge leaves behind a deformation trail affecting the positions of the ion cores. This trail is associated with an increased density of positive charge because of the ion cores and thus has an attractive effect on a second electron. The lattice deformation therefore causes a weak attraction between pairs of electrons. Uh, this attractive electron-electron interaction is retarded because of the slow motion of the ions in comparison with the almost instantaneous Coulomb repulsion between electrons. At the instant when an electron passes, the ions receive a pull which only after the electron is passed leads to a displacement and thereby to a polarization of the lattice. The lattice deformation reaches its maximum at a distance from the first electron 
uh, which can be estimated from the electron velocity which is none other than the Fermi velocity and which is nearly equal to 10 power 6 meter per second and the phonon vibration period which is nearly equal to 10 to the power minus 13 second. So let me first show you a qualitative plot of the displacement of the ion cores as a function of their distance behind the first electron. So here I go. So on this axis I have shown the distance from electron and uh, along this axis the deformation amplitude. So this deformation amplitude this is maximum at a distance of Vf into 2 pi by omega d which turns out to be if I take the product 10 power 6 meter per second into 10 power minus 13 second that is equal to 10 power minus 7 meter which is 1000 angstrom which is precisely the size of the Cooper pair that means the two electrons correlated by the lattice deformation uh, have an approximate separation of about 1000 angstrom now quantum mechanically the lattice deformation can be understood as the simple position of phonons which the electron on account of its interaction with the lattice continuously emits and absorbs. Now all of you know that the energy of a lattice vibration is quantized and the quantum of energy is called a phonon. Further, to comply with the energy conservation, the phonons constituting the, the lattice deformation may exist only for a very brief period of time that is determined by the uncertainty principle thereafter they must be absorbed. This is the reason why we always speak of virtual phonons. Hmm. Now the ground state of non-interacting Fermi gas of electrons in a potential well corresponds to the situation where all electron states with wave vector k within the Fermi sphere EF0 at t is equal to 0 k are completely filled and all states with E greater than EF0 that means above the Fermi sphere are completely unoccupied. We now perform a thought experiment. Thought experiment has nothing to do with the laboratory experiment. So this is to be done completely in our minds and thereby we add to the system two electrons specified by k1 ek1 this k1 stands for the wave vector and the corresponding energy ek1 and k2 ek2 respectively in states just above ef0 means these two electrons specified by k1 ek1 and k2 ek2 respectively are taken from just above the Fermi sphere. Now a weak attractive interaction between these two electrons is switched on in the form of phonon exchange. All other electrons in the Fermi C are assumed to be non-interacting and on account of the Pauli exclusion principle they exclude a further occupation of states with k less than kf that means there is no vacancy below the Fermi sphere. Next, due to the phonon exchange the two additional electrons continuously exchange their wave vector however the momentum has to remain conserved and therefore we can write this particular equation k1 plus k2 is equal to k1 prime plus k2 prime is equal to k that is constant so this is equation number 1 for us. Now since the interaction in K space is restricted to a shell with an energy thickness of h cross omega d above EF0, I am going to draw two spherical shells with Fermi radius Kf and thickness delta K describing the pair of wave vectors K1 and K2. So these two spheres spherical shells rather I have shown. Now all pairs for which k1 plus k2 is equal to k end in the shaded volume which is rotationally symmetric about k. 
you can see this is k1 this is minus k2 this is k so the number of pairs k1 k2 is proportional to this volume in k space and will therefore be maximum for k is equal to 0 you can see it very easily when k is equal to 0 these two spherical shells sort of overlap and the shaded region this one this grows to become this entire region you can see so this becomes maximum as already mentioned since the interaction in k space is restricted to a shell with an energy thickness of h cross omega d where omega d stands for d by frequency above ef naught above ef naught the possible k states are given by the shaded area now this area and therefore the number of energy reducing phonon exchange processes that is the strength of the attractive interaction is maximum is maximum for k is equal to 0 so as i had already mentioned when k becomes 0 these two spheres sort of overlap and thus shaded area becomes maximum as it is shown here it is therefore sufficient to consider the case k1 is equal to minus k2 is equal to kc that is electron pairs with equal and opposite wave vectors the associated two particle wave function psi r1 r2 must obey the schrodinger equation minus h cross square by 2m del 1 square plus del 2 square psi r1 r2 plus v r1 r2 psi r1 r2 is equal to e psi r1 r2 and this i write as small e plus 2 e f naught psi r1 r2 here the small e is the energy of the electron pair relative to the interaction free state where v is equal to 0 once again let me repeat this is the energy of the electron pair relative to the interaction free state that means when v is equal to 0 and in this interaction free state each of the two electrons at the Fermi level would possess an energy given by E f naught is equal to h cross square k f square divided by 2m. Now the two particle wave function in this case consists of two plane waves and I am writing it out over here 1 by L cross cube under root e raised to the power i k1 dot r1 into 1 by under root l cube e raised to the power i k2 dot r2 and this we can write as 1 by l cube e raised to the power i k dot r1 minus r2 this is quite obvious because vector k2 is equal to minus vector k1 so let me provide equation number for this uh, Schrodinger equation I write equation number 2 and for this uh, two particle function this I write 3 so viewers the remaining part of my discussion on Cooper pairs involving mostly the analytical treatment will be done in lecture 2 which I will be uploading very soon. Till then, goodbye, have a nice day.